The year is 1965. Nissan, I mean, Datsun, was to release an all-new engine series called the L-Series engines. They were both made in four-cylinder and six-cylinder configurations. In this episode, we're only going to be covering the six-cylinder versions. The four-cylinders were good their own episode in the future. Mercedes-Benz oftentimes gets credited for both development and design of this engine, but that's not 100% true. Prince Motor Company merged with Nissan. Prior to the merger, Prince had been building four cylinders and six cylinders under license from Mercedes-Benz. Prince would make changes and would refine the design to the point that they didn't need the licenses anymore but it still kind of resembled a Mercedes-Benz engine. Two valves per cylinder, one intake, one exhaust, single overhead cam, does not have a cross-flow head despite having intake and exhaust ports on opposite sides of the engine. Cast in tried and true cast iron, monoblock design, meaning the cylinders, crankcase, and cylinder block itself was one casting. Aluminum head, the pistons used could either be the dished type or flat top type. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Fully pressurized oiling lubrication system. In four months time, they had a working prototype, but since the engine was more or less rushed to market, there were issues. Issues included, but not limited to, excessive oil consumption caused by piston ring design and valve seats. People also complained about the noise and bad fuel economy. The very first Datsun or Nissan L-Series engine was the L20, introduced in 1965 for the 1966 model year. It was 1998cc or 121.9 cubic inch displacement overhead valve, overhead cam, inline six, 2.0 liters. It was good for anywhere between 109 to 130 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 146 pound feet or 196 newton meters around 4,400 RPM with a bore of 3.07 inches and a stroke of 2.74 inches. Compression was 8.6 to one or 9.1 to one with two carburetors. Seven main bearings, years this engine was used, 1966 through 1968. It was used in the Nissan Skyline GT or the Nissan Cydric. Because the engine was rushed to market, it had issues. They had to go back to the drawing board and fix those issues. In 1970, the L20A came out and that would replace the L20. They expanded bore pitch so the engine could be enlarged in the future. Also, as a side note, moving forward, L just means leader. And then whatever number comes after it, would be the displacement for the engine size. So say L20, that's two liters. L16 would be 1.6 liter. L23 would be 2.3 liters, etc. Next up, introduced in 1968, the L23, 2262 cc, 138 cubic inch displacement overhead valve, overhead cam, inline six, 2.3 liters. It was good for 123 horsepower at 5,200 RPM, 117 pound feet, or 158 newton meters around 3,600 RPM, with a bore of 3.27 inches and a stroke of 2.74 inches. Compression was nine to one. Years this engine was used, 1968 through 1969, it could be found in the Nissan Cedric. It was replaced by the L24. The L24 had a displacement of 2393cc or 196 cubic inch displacement overhead valve, overhead cam in line six, 2.4 liters. It was good for anywhere between 128 to 150 horsepower with dual SU carburetors. You could bump that figure up to 191 horsepower with the trips. It's important to note that the triple Weber carburetor setup wasn't a factory option here in the States, but there's nothing sexier than when you open a hood and you see those six trumpets sticking out. 
Looks and sounds absolutely epic. That power could be had at 5,600 RPM, 146 pound-feet, or 198 newton meters, around 4,400 RPM, with a bore of 3.27 inches and a stroke of 2.9 inches. Years this engine was used, 1969 through 1984. It's important to note that there was an L24E that came out in 1977 and was used until 1986, which added electronic fuel injection export engine that Japan never got. In 1974, a new version would be made after the stroke would increase, bringing overall displacement to 2565cc, 156.5 cubic inch displacement in line, overhead valve, overhead cam, in line 6, 2.6 liters, called the L26. It was good for anywhere between 138 to 160 horsepower at 5600 RPM. 157 pound feet or 212 newton meters around 4400 rpm bore of 3.27 inches and a stroke of 3 and 11 inches compression is 9 to 1 years this engine was used 1973 through 1978 it could be found in the 1974 Datsun 260z as well as the 1976 through 1978 Nissan Cedric Nissan Laurel from 1974 through 1977. In the States, we only got the L26 for one year, 1974, in the Datsun 260Z. In other markets, that engine went for longer. In 1975, bore would increase to 3.39 inches, bringing overall displacement to 168 cubic inch displacement, 2753 cc, inline overhead valve, overhead cam, 6, 2.8 liters, aka L28. It was good for anywhere between 133 to 143 horsepower at 5600 RPM. 148 pound feet or 201 newton meters around 4400 rpm with a bore of 3.39 inches and a stroke of 3.11 inches compression was 8.3 to 1 years this engine was used 1975 through 1984 it's important to note that in 1975 there was a electronic multi-fuel injection uh, setup offered on the L28. That version was called the L28E. It was good for 133 horsepower from 1975 through 1984 with the dish top pistons. From 1975 through 1978, the horsepower increased to 143 horsepower with flat top pistons. There was also a turbo version called the L28ET for electronic multi-port fuel injection and turbocharged. And that was offered from 1980 through 1983 and it was good for 180 horsepower. This was the cat's meow as far as Nissan was concerned with this type of engine. They loved it so much that Nissan decided to make a diesel variant called the LD28. It had a slightly different engine displacement size because it had a different combustion chamber arrangement with a pre-combustion chamber. Overall displacement was 2792 cc or 170 0.4 cubic inch displacement overhead valve in line 6 2.8 liters don't forget head overhead cam as well it was good for 90 horsepower at 4600 rpm 125 pound feet or 170 newton meters around 2400 rpm with a bore of 3.33 inches and a stroke of 3.27 inches years this engine was used 1980 through 1987 it was not marketed here in the U.S., but it's worth mentioning that Nissan would do a turbo diesel variant of the LD28 called the LD28T. It was only available for certain markets like Japan, Aust Australia, New Zealand, and Southern Africa. It also ended up in some parts of Europe as well. It's worth mentioning that Nissan slash Datsun didn't make a twin cam version of this engine from the factory, but there were companies that would offer that later in the aftermarket sector. 
While on the topic of aftermarket, these engines were highly regarded in the JDM community for being reliable, bulletproof bottom end, aftermarket offered a ton of speed parts for these engines. There was a company called Rebello who offered on the 2.8 liter a 3 liter, 3.1 or 3.2 big bore conversion. The kit is not cheap, but it's capable of producing 300 horsepower and it sounds absolutely epic. <laughs> Dotson slash Nissan would phase out this engine in 1985, replacing it by the RB and VG engines. But as they say, that's another engine episode. Both of those engine series will definitely be covered on here eventually. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1972 Dotson 240Z or... 1969 Nissan Skyline GTR or 1973 Nissan Cetric. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. On to the second scenario, 1974 Nissan Laurel or 1972 Nissan Skyline or... 1977 Datsun or Nissan 280Z. Once again, gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. On to name that tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this one. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. Or you can always send me an email at what underscore it's underscore like at yahoo.com. Thanks again for everything that you guys bring in the comment section. If you had any of these cars, please share some of the stories and the memories in the comment section. Until next time, toodaloo!